Hello bookworms! Today I'm going to be doing another news and stuff video. So this is the first video that I'm actually filming like in real time after pretty much all of the events that happened in March. I gave a little disclaimer at the beginning of my March in May. I gave a little disclaimer at the beginning of my May book haul, but I just wanted to reiterate again that I highly encourage you to I highly encourage you to educate yourself about everything that is going on in the United States at the moment. If you have the ability to donate, that is definitely something worth doing. If you have the ability to sign petitions or go to protests, though obviously it's a pandemic, so that might not be something that is reasonable for you to do, but just do whatever you can to support black people during this time and forever after because it's not just a small snippet in time, it's something that needs to be happening all the time. The first thing that I want to say, which I am starting off on something that is not book news, but I feel like is a big win, is that starting next year in 2021, Juneteenth is going to be an observed holiday in New York State. So schools will be closed and people won't have to go to work, which I think is a holiday that should have been celebrated for a long time. And I'm really glad that it's getting recognized now. And now moving into the book news. The first thing that I wanted to talk about is that Holly Black announced that she's coming out with a short story collection called How the King of Elfheim Learned to Hate Stories, and it's going to be basically like a short story novella that is completely told from Cardin's perspective. So we're going to be getting his perspective from before him and Jude were together all the way through the events of Queen of Nothing, and then also a little epilogue like afterward of what's going on with them now and it's going to be illustrated and it's coming out on November 24th so we don't even have to wait very long for it. I'm obviously incredibly excited for this book. Folk of the Air is one of my favorite series ever and I am definitely in support of getting more of it. There is also going to be a Barnes & Noble edition just like there were for the first three books in the series so the Barnes & Noble edition is going to be the black cover version. I think that it's really beautiful and I already pre-ordered both <laughs> both versions of the book to go along with my million copies of the original trilogy. And then while we're talking about Holly Black, it was also announced that her first fairy trilogy, the Modern Fairy Tales series, is going to be getting updated covers once again. So last year they came out with the bind up of the Modern Fairy Tales series, but now they're going to be releasing them individually with updated covers. They're very pretty and they definitely match the series better than any of the covers in the past have. However, I unhauled these books so quick after Fairyathon. I really didn't enjoy them. Can't say that I'll be buying them, but they are very pretty if you are a Holly Black collector. And then speaking of Barnes & Noble special editions, there's going to be a really pretty white cover of Carrie Maniscalco's new book, Kingdom of the Wicked. This is another one that I've already pre-ordered. I am so looking forward to this book. Like, it's probably my most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I have loved all of Carrie's books so far. I'm so excited excited to read something new by her. And it's not super far away. I believe it's coming out on October 27th, though the release date has changed a couple of times, so I'm not 100% sure when it's coming, but it's either going to be late October or early November, so not too much of a wait. Then Tor is releasing a special 30th anniversary edition of The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. This is the first book in the Wheel of Time series, and it still has the original artwork of that, like, classic blue cover except they took all of the blue away and they made it into like a shiny metallic silver cover. I think it's really pretty. I'm not actually certain what kind of extras are going to be included but I'm definitely going to grab a copy since I loved the eye of the world so much and I can't wait to see what additions have been added in as like extra anniversary content. Then we're getting yet another collector's edition in October and this one is for Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. This is probably one of the most beautiful books I have ever seen. It's light pink, it has an Eiffel Tower on the cover, the pages are oh my gosh so so pretty. I cannot wait to get my hands on a copy of this. It's stunning. So gorgeous and I really hope that they'll do the rest of the series in this format too. Next there is a Kickstarter currently running for beautiful leather bound editions of The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. It's the first book that's going to be reprinted in leather bound editions so Way of Kings is going to be split up into two beautiful leather bound books and you can kickstart it right now. There are a bunch of different tiers and each of them have different rewards. I'm not going to go into any of that because you can just look at it on Kickstarter but 
they're really, really nice. And supposedly there's also going to be a new novella within the Stormlight Archive series. Next up, I have a whole lot of cover reveals to talk about. So the first one is Sky Hunter by Marie Liu. This one's coming on September 29th of 2020, so not too far away. It's so pretty. I really like all of the colors that they used in this cover, like to capture that skyline. I think it's really pretty. I'm not actually too certain what this book is about. It kind of just the cover reveal happened and I was like I didn't even know she was coming out with a new book because she came out with Kingdom of Back at the beginning of the year which I still haven't read and I need to do that. Just by the cover alone I'm definitely gonna end up getting a copy. Then we got the cover for You Have a Match by Emma Lord. I really loved Emma Lord's debut book Tweet Cute and I cannot wait to see what this author is coming out with next. I think the cover is super pretty coming on January 5th, 2021, and I can't wait to get it. Then we got the cover for Anna K Away, which is the second book in the Anna K series by Jenny Lee. I believe this is a duology, so this should be the final book, but I'm not 100% sure because, to be honest, I didn't even know that there was going to be more than one. I was told not to read the synopsis until I read Anna K, so I can't tell you what it's about, but I do know that it's going to be following the same characters. And this one's coming out on March 9th of of 2021. Then we have the cover for Down Comes the Night by Alison Saft. This is a new gothic romance YA fantasy debut and I cannot wait to read it. The synopsis sounded amazing. I really like the cover. I think it is super pretty and it just sounds like it's going to be an incredibly atmospheric read. And this one's coming out on March 2nd, 2021. Then we have the cover of Written in Starlight by Isabel Ibanex. This is the second book in the Woven in Moonlight series. This cover is just as beautiful as the first cover. I think these are like some of the best YA covers that I've ever seen in my life. They're honestly just stunning. And this one's coming January 26th, 2021. Then we got the cover for the Vampires Never Get Old anthology. This one's coming September 22nd, 2020, and there is an all-star cast of authors that have written stories for this book. It's being co-edited by Zoraida Cordova and Natalie C. Parker, and other authors writing stories in the book include Samira Ahmed, Danielle Clayton, Tessa Gratton, Heidi Hellig, Julie Murphy, Marco Shiro, Rebecca Roanhorse, Laura Ruby, V.E. Schwab, and Kayla Whaley. Then we got a cover for Tales from the Hinterland by Melissa Albert. This one I've been really looking forward to because it's the collection of fairy tales from the Hazel Wood book. It's actually going to be like a bind up of that book that was written by Althea and I am so excited to read it. This one comes out January 12th, 2021 and it's super beautiful. It's going to match the rest of the books in the series so well. Then we have the cover for The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I have loved all of Jennifer Lynn Barnes's books so far. I have read quite a few of them and after there was that whole deal between Little Brown and Disney, this title moved over so it's actually being published by Little Brown now. And and it's coming out on September 29th and I really love this cover. Then we got the cover for Across the Green Grass and Fields by Shauna McGuire. This is the sixth book in the Wayward Children series. It's coming out in January. She seems to release one every single January and it reminded me that I actually haven't read the fifth one yet, so I need to get on that. Then A River of Royal Blood by Amanda Joy is getting a new look. So the paperback edition is going to have this beautiful new cover, and the second book in the series, A Queen of Gilded Horns, is going to have a matching cover, and I think that this is a really good direction to take these covers in. They look really beautiful. As of now, they don't have an official release date, but it says that they are coming in 2021. Then we got a cover for Black Canary, Breaking Silence, by Alexandra Monier. This cover is my favorite. <laughs> this has to be Jen Bartel artwork. Like it is 100% her style. It's gorgeous. It's set in the near future in Gotham City when it's under patriarchal control of the Court of Owls. And it's going to be following a young Dina Lance as she finds the power of her voice, which I'm here for it. <laughs> and this one's coming out in December. Then we got the cover for In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. This one's coming out on October 6th, and this is going to be a cute holiday romance. I don't really know anything else about it, but I'm sure that I'll pick it up because I love holiday books. Next is the Arusha and the City of Gold cover. This is the conclusion to the Pandava Quartet series. It's by Roshni Chakshi and this one's coming out on April 6th of 2021. And now that the series is completed, I really need to pick this one up. I feel like I've been enjoying middle grade a lot more and this one was compared to Sailor Moon, so I feel like I need to just 
get them all and binge them. Then we got the cover for Makeup Breakup by Lily Menon. This is the first adult romance novel by Sentaya Menon, who I'm sure you know from her YA contemporary romance titles like when Dimple Met Rishi and there's something about Sweetie. So this is going to be her first foray into adult fiction and I'm pretty excited to check it out and I also really like this cover. This one's coming February 2nd of 2021. Then we got a cover for The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon. This is a new Berkeley romance and it's a it's an enemies to lovers public radio rom-com which quite frankly sounds adorable and this one's coming out on February 9th. Next we have the cover for The Project by Courtney Summers. This one's coming February second. Next is This Time Tomorrow by Tessa Bailey and this one should either be out right now or coming out within a few days. It's the second book after Reborn Yesterday in Tessa Bailey's Paranormal Romance Vampire series. I'm pretty excited for this one because while the first one wasn't my favorite, I'm really looking forward to reading about the characters being followed in this second book and I think this cover is gorgeous. Then we have the cover for Namesake by Adrienne Young. This is the second book in the Fable duology and the covers line up so nicely together. Wednesday Books posted a photo on their Instagram of the two covers side by side and oh they're gorgeous. <laughs> And this one's coming March 16th. Then we have the cover for Perfect on Paper by Sophie Gonzalez. This is a new queer story that's coming out from Wednesday Books on March 9th and I really like the cover for this one. It's that like pretty illustrated style. Then we have the cover for Slingshot by Mercedes Helmwein and this is another Wednesday Books rom-com debut that's going to be coming out next year. This one's coming out April 27th. I really like the cover and it says that it's perfect for fans of Jenny Han so you can count me in. Then we got the cover and also the announcement for From a Certain Point of View, Empire Strikes Back. So we got From a Certain Point of View, A New Hope a couple of years ago now and they're doing another collection of short stories that are going to be told from the perspective of secondary characters in the Empire Strikes Back film. And I'm so excited and my friend Amy, Amy Ratcliffe, is going to be writing one of the stories in that book and I cannot wait to read her fiction debut. For those who don't know, she wrote Women of the Galaxy, which is a beautiful, beautiful book that tells you like all about all of the women within the Star Wars universe. She's honestly like a super talented writer and I'm so excited to see her getting published for fiction. I cannot wait to read it. But there are actually going to be 40 stories in this collection by 40 different authors. So besides Amy, there will also be stories from Hank Green and Martha Wells, Marco Shiro, S.A. Chakraborty, Zoraida Cordova, E.K. Johnston, Delilah S. Dawson, Alexander Freed, R.F. Kwong, C.B. Lee, Mackenzie Lee, Daniel Jose Older, Kavan Scott, Catherine M. Valente, and Django Wexler, just to name a few. So some of those are very familiar your faces within the Star Wars extended universe and then other ones are going to be fresh new voices that we'll be hearing from for the first time and I can't wait. And this is coming out on November 10th. Then in December, Neil Gaiman is coming out with a children's book called Pirate Stew. It's going to be illustrated by Chris Rydell, who is someone that he has teamed up with many times in the past. And this is a children's picture book about pirates. Then Maggie Stiefvater posted a photo on Instagram announcing that the second book in the Dreamer trilogy is going to be coming out in May of 2021. We don't have a cover or anything yet, but just the upcoming release date, so I think people are pretty excited about that. I still need to read Call Down the Hawk. I've been a terrible reader. And then I don't know about you guys, but I personally love to watch YouTube videos of authors and hear them either speak about their books or do readings from their books because obviously they know their work best. So I thought I would just throw this in here, but you can actually watch a clip online of Victoria Schwab reading the first chapter of her upcoming book, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue on YouTube. So that was just a really enjoyable experience. I'm so excited to read Addie and I've been looking forward to it for like ever, but you can get a sneak peek if you watch that video. Next, it was announced that Rebecca Root is going to be the first trans companion in the Doctor Who series. She's going to be playing the eighth Doctor's companion in an upcoming audio series called Stranded. Then we got revised release dates for everything in the High Republic series coming from Star Wars. This was like a huge new publishing initiative where they're writing a brand new era of the Star Wars world that hasn't ever been touched by film or video games or books 
in current canon in the past. So it's like a brand new publishing initiative and it's happening across a whole bunch of different publishers. It was supposed to start coming out in September, but with all of the virus delays, it has gotten pushed back because they wanna launch it at a time when the world is a little bit better so that it can get the attention that it deserves. Everything's now going to be coming out in January of 2021 or gonna be kicking off. So the first two releases are going to be Charles Sewell's adult novel and Justina Ireland's middle grade novel followed by Claudia Gray's YA novel. Literally everything got pushed back. Those are just the first three things that are going to be released in January once the initiative starts. Then, and I'm sure what was a surprise to nobody, Disney Plus is going to be adapting the Percy Jackson series for their streaming service. I think that fans are very excited because from what I understand, the Percy Jackson film was not very good. I personally never saw it, so I can't speak to it. And I'm also not a huge fan of the Percy Jackson series. I just didn't grow up with it the way that other people did, but I'm really excited for the fans who have been obsessed with it and will hopefully get an adaptation that will do the series justice. Apparently Rick Riordan is going to be very involved in the process and the first series is just going to focus on the first book Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. So presumably this will be a five season show with one season covering each book in the series. Then speaking of Disney Plus, we do not have to wait much longer until July 3rd when Hamilton is going to be streaming and I'm so excited. It's been so long since I have gotten to see Hamilton. I listened to the soundtrack like nonstop since my first viewing of the show on Broadway, but I'm so excited to get to watch it in my own home and also to have Andrew see it because he only knows the music because I listen to it nonstop, but he never actually had the pleasure of like seeing the show and now I'll finally get to watch it with him. It's also been announced that Naomi Novik's next book, A Deadly Schlomance, is going to be adapted for film. Universal Pictures won the film rights to the series, even though the first book hasn't even come out. It's coming out in September of this year. I'm very excited. It's been described as a very dark, twisted, feminist version of Harry Potter. It takes place at a wizarding school and I can't wait to read this. Then two of Grady Hendrick's books are going to be adapted. So the first announcement was that Horror Store is going to be adapted into a movie and it's actually going to be adapted by Grady Hendrix himself. The rights for this were purchased by New Republic Pictures. And then the second announcement is that Grady Hendrix's newest book, The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, is going to be adapted into an Amazon original series. No word on how many episodes there will be or a release date on that or if Grady is involved in helping adapt at all, but that's pretty big news. Ray Bradbury's The Halloween Tree is also going to be getting a film adaptation. This won't be the first time that The Halloween Tree has gotten an adaptation, but it'll be the first time in a long time that it's happened. And this one's getting adapted by Warner Brothers. And the last bit of adaptation news is that Animorphs is going to be adapted into a film. So Scholastic is teaming up with Eric Feig and his picture cert banner, and I'm sure that fans are speculating over which book in the 54 book long series will actually be the one to get adapted. Andrew has been talking about the Animorphs books since I first met him because he grew up reading them, so I don't know anything about them aside from what he's told me, but I'm really excited for him and for other fans of the series. Then we got the trailer for the Netflix adaptation of Frank Miller's Cursed. It's a new take on the Arthurian legend and it claims that the Lady in the Lake who's played by Catherine Langford is actually the rightful heir to the throne and that the sword belongs to her. I'm pretty excited. I think the trailer looks really good and it's actually coming very soon. It'll be streaming on July 17th. Then I was so excited to hear that Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse 2 has resumed production. Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse is my favorite Spider-Man movie of all time, and Spider-Man is my favorite superhero, so I am so happy to hear that things are moving again. It's still projected to be coming out in 2020, and the second Spider-Verse is supposed to focus on the relationship between Gwen Stacy and Miles Morales. I can't wait. <laughs> cannot wait. And speaking of Miles Morales, Sony announced a Spider-Man Miles Morales video game that will be coming for the PS5. I have not played the original Spider-Man video game because we don't have a PS4 and I don't know 
if we will be getting a PS5, but I will definitely watch gameplay of that online because the first one was beautiful from what I saw. Then it was announced that the Gossip Girl reboot, which is coming to HBO Max, has actually gotten delayed, so that's not going to be coming out until 2021, which I'm not surprised because we haven't heard too much news on it aside from some casting a little earlier, but obviously with delays everything's getting pushed back. And then speaking of pushbacks, Wonder Woman 1984 is getting pushed back yet again. It was originally supposed to come out in June and then it got pushed back to August and now it's not going to be coming out in theaters until October 2nd, so the wait continues. There's also going to be a Snyder Cut of Justice League that is coming to HBO Max in 2021. I believe Zack Snyder was supposed to edit the whole movie and then there was some kind of conflict, so DC ended up hiring Joss Whedon to do it, but I think people are very interested in seeing what the original intent was behind Justice League. I still haven't seen the movie. Then it was there was a Pokemon Direct and it was announced that Nintendo is redoing Pokemon Snap and coming out with a new game for the Nintendo Switch. I'm so excited. I loved Pokemon Snap when it was on Nintendo 64. It was like one of the best games in the world and the graphics that they released so far in the Nintendo Direct were beautiful. I'm so, so excited. There is no word at all on any release date for this, unfortunately. There's actually going to be another Pokemon Direct the day that this video goes up, so I'm curious what that news will be. And then also while I'm talking about Pokemon, they announced that there's going to be a global Go Fest. So this is the first time ever where, where you can actually participate in Pokemon Go's Go Fest no matter where you are in the world. Usually there are in-person events held at different cities in the world, but because of everything going on and because people aren't able to travel, they opened it up globally so you can participate wherever you are in the world. You do have to buy a ticket, but it's a two-day event, which also is the first time that you'll be able to participate for both days of the event. I bought my ticket as soon as they went live. I'm so excited. Andrew and I were supposed to go to GoFest in Philadelphia this year, but it got canceled, obviously. Hopefully it'll get rescheduled for maybe sometime next year. And it was really fun. Like I had so much fun playing the whole day and I'm really looking forward to doing the GoFest in July. It's actually the weekend of my birthday, so those are our plans. And then last bit of news is that Smash is actually going to be getting a Broadway adaptation, which I'm so excited for. You guys don't even know how badly I miss Broadway. We haven't been to a Broadway show since February. We were supposed to see a whole bunch of Broadway shows in the past couple of months, but Broadway has gone dark since the virus started, and as of now it's supposed to stay closed until September 12th, but I honestly wouldn't be surprised if that gets extended even further. But I'm glad that this is in the works. Andrew and I watched Smash earlier in the year, and I loved it, and I watched the Smash uh, reunion show that they did, what was it, like a couple of weeks ago. They put on Bombshell the Musical. It was excellent, and they had like a little Zoom call in the middle instead of an intermission. It was amazing. I will definitely be getting tickets to the show once it is safe to do so. But that is all of the book and movie and game news that I had to catch up on for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if there's anything that you're particularly excited about. And that's all that I have for this video, so I'll see you guys soon in a new one. Bye!